Hello, I'm Kathleen Olive. Many of us are familiar with the idea of Japanese art's impact on 19th century Western painting. Today, Limelight Arts Travel's Nick Gordon and I take a very specific example of this artistic back and forth. Only 30 years separate Utagawa Hiroshige's close up view of a spectacular plum tree in bloom from Vincent van Gogh's take on the very same scene. Setting these two works against each other, we see how differences in medium and technique, as well as two very different worldviews, can transform a direct copy into a manifesto of a new style of art altogether. Hi, Nick. Hi, Kathleen. So what uh, works are we going to chat about together today? Well, today we have brought together a pair of works from opposite sides of the globe, which are very closely related. So we have uh, Vincent van Gogh's copy of a woodblock print of Hiroshige's. That's right. So the work that we have by Utagawa Hiroshige to talk about is called Plum Park in Kameido. Kameido is a place in Tokyo near the uh, Sumida River and the work uh, by Hiroshige is from 1857 and is a woodblock print. Whereas the, the Van Gogh is from 1887, October and November 1887. Uh, it's from shortly after Van Gogh had uh, moved to Paris. He'd been introduced to the Parisian art world, people like Pizarro, and at the same time had discovered uh, Japanese printing in a big way. Uh, and he has this great love for Japanese prints. So just 30 years then between these two works, let's maybe describe the woodblock print, uh, seeing as it's the origin work for Van Gogh's take on it. So in the woodblock print, we are looking at a very key kind of scene of blossom viewing. We are in a, a park alongside the Sumida River. The Sumida River, which still runs through uh, Tokyo today, was a really famous place for viewing blossom in the season. And this was a particularly famous blossom tree that uh, Hiroshige chooses to show here. In fact, it was known as the sleeping dragon plum. And people would come to look at this particular tree. We've got a really unusual view close into the very uh, trunk of the tree and then through the gnarled branches of the sleeping dragon plum. We can see the rest of a plum orchard beyond, very deep green grass and behind a little wicker or bamboo fence we can see people moving back and forth in small groups to admire the plum blossoms that are momentarily in season. Uh, there seem to be a number of little pieces of text on this as well. As, and what about today? Yeah, absolutely. So in the Hiroshige woodblock print that we're taking as our kind of origin work, we have uh, what we'd call cartouches. The one that is hanging on the actual sleeping uh, dragon plum tree seems to be its most frequently interpreted as a kind of anti-vandalism sign for this really famous and important tree. Whereas the cartouches that we have in the top right of the woodblock print are kind of stylized versions of Hiroshige's signature, and they also tell us what uh, series of woodblock prints this work is from because this is just one of uh, the prints in a large series of 100 views of famous places in Edo that Hiroshige, the woodblock uh, designer, was commissioned to uh, design by a publisher in, uh, in Tokyo. Hmm. Whereas with the, the Van Gogh, we do have him copying even are uh, the locations of those cartouches, but he's added in all sorts of other text along the sides, uh, and it's probably not real text. So he's kind of bor borrowing the idea of kind of the vague idea of what it looks like, because he might be seeing it as, as part of what's captured, part of the culture that's captured inside the woodblock, even if he can't read it or reproduce it himself. There are some really, I mean, when you put these next to one another, there are, it's so clear the dependence of Van Gogh's work on the woodblock print by Hiroshige, even down to those bands of horizontal colour that move uh, across both of these works and the, the bands of colour are the same. And yet colour for me is also a real point of difference between these works. Uh, absolutely, I agree. And you can see with Van Gogh's work, uh, he's uh, really intensified the colours 
And this is a period in Van Gogh's life where uh, having moved to Paris, he moves away from his early paintings, which tend to be quite uh, dull and macabre, even down to the colour. If you saw them in a gallery, you would have no idea it's Van Gogh. Uh, to start using these much richer, much more vibrant colours, uh, which are reflecting what's happening with the Impressionists and early post-Impressionists in Paris. So he's making this kind of huge change uh, in how he's thinking about art. And I think one of the things we can see in this composition too is Van Gogh hitting on something which becomes, I suppose, a very key part of uh, modern Western painting. And it's the way that uh, if you were to paint uh, traditionally in a Western way, uh, the most famous tree in Kyoto, or the most famous tree in Edo, sorry, uh, you would have that tree entirely, like a portrait, entirely contained within the canvas. Whereas what I think Van Gogh is picking up on here is that kind of the objects that you're painting are part of a composition that goes well beyond the canvas. And you can still get the essence of a tree, even if most of that tree is not depicted at all. Yeah, in fact, that's something that Hiroshige was known for as a woodblock designer. He was considered to be a great master. He really came into his own as an artist towards the uh, middle age and later years of his life. And one of the things that local consumers of woodblock prints, because prints such as these were produced in their thousands, they were extremely popular, and he sold lots and lots of prints, which was why publishers were always commissioning him to do series of works for them. And one of the things that we know people really appreciate in Hiroshige's work and which we know as well that subsequent artists Whistler for example commented on this directly subsequent artists also admire in his work is the way in which he chooses very unusual perspectives and viewing points which apparently seem to cut the scene off but by cutting the scene, scene off in these strange kind of close-up ways actually give you more of a sense of, of being there of having this particular perspective yourself Self. And with those really strong lines that the gnarled trunk throws out in that arch moving from left over to right, he does also really manage to convey something of the character of this venerable plum tree uh, through that uh, that line, that arc of dark colour of the of the branch here that almost kind of cuts off my ability to see what's happening in the midground or in the distance. But by doing that really conveys something of the essence of this tree, but also of the experience of, of moving around a tree and looking at a scene beyond it. Whereas I think what we see uh, with Van Gogh is he's uh, the way just we notice the way those trees in the the midground are a different color and they've got a much heavier outline applied to them which for him seems to i think could have uh stop making it look like that those trees in the midground are an extension of the tree in the foreground especially on the left hand side but it also i think heightens that contrast uh with that uh, that mid bright midsection showing kind of uh, that where the sky and the the, blo the blossoms seem to be fusing together that really rich band of color uh, and that kind of gray that muted color underneath I think for me at least seems to help amplify the brightness of the blossom above. Yeah absolutely I think one of the things that is so important to Japanese aesthetics but particularly as a medium to woodblock prints is line and Hiroshige has such a beautiful control of line in work such as this one and also in the kind of prints that people are probably more familiar with by him so he did a very famous set of 36 views of Mount Fuji for example and a number of us would be familiar with uh, iconic works from that particular series. He has such a control of line. His lines are so strong and so dynamic, uh, even as, as we've said, they kind of cut the scene off. But I think Van Gogh is, res is responding to that strength of line, but he's also, as you say, doing something quite different with light. So for me, one of the big differences between these works is how those bands of colour are functioning quite differently. So Hiroshige's colours would have been much more saturated than we see them now. Uh, the woodblock prints made by people like Hiroshige were printed frequently using very organic or unstable pigments and so their colors have changed over time they're really really susceptible to light for example so right at the top of the Hiroshige print or in the crowd of people that we can just make out in the distance you can see blue and that's actually Prussian blue it was a new introduction in Japan in Hiroshige's own lifetime artists such as Hiroshige 
uh, and, and the great master Hokusai were uh, really fascinated by the use of Prussian blue in their works. They really grasp onto it as something new that they can work with now that Japan in their lifetime is opening up more to trade with the, the rest of the world. And so that would have been a much stronger blue. The green that we see in the grass would have been a much deeper green, probably closer to the kind of saturation that we see in the work by Van Gogh. Uh, that was inspired by Hiroshige. But I think what uh, what you get in Hiroshige that you don't get in Van Gogh is something that the medium really allowed Hiroshige to do, and that is control the gradation of colour by wiping or spreading the ink. Uh, when it was printed by a master printer, the printer would uh, wipe off excess ink either in an upward or a downward direction. You can see with the grass, the ink is being wiped in an upwards direction. You can see with the rosy glow in the sky that that that's being wiped in a downwards direction. It gives a gradation of tone that's known as bokashi and it really gives a sense of light and mood and even time of day. So it gives us atmospherics as well. Whereas what uh, Van Gogh is doing with light through that blaze of yellow and gold that we see in the, in the plum blossoms, I think that's quite different. Absolutely. And there I think he's, uh, he's exploiting kind of the, the thickness of oil paint. Uh, which kind of we know from his later or kind of works from this period and slightly afterwards uh, becomes almost a hallmark of his work, how far you can start pushing the textural quality of paint to create visual effects that can be seen from a distance. In this case here, it, I think he's doing a fantastic job of giving us a sense of that uh, that rough, apparently roughish texture. If you look at a, 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 an orchard in blossom from a distance, You've got light hitting or things that aren't flat, that things are hitting petals that are at all different angles and causing that light to scatter and to glow. And he's using, I think, the, the, the thickness of the paint, the roughness of the paint to give us a bit of that visual texture. And I think for, for me, at least, that helps create, I suppose, a, a sense of immediacy uh, in the experience of uh, looking at the painting that you would have if you were looking at an orchard. Hmm. I've got a tricky kind of question for you that I'll just spring on you. I mean, one of the things that Hiroshige is known for is that unusual use of single point perspective that he kind of thrusts you uh, right into the scene with unusual ways of seeing. He's really known for his control of line. Uh, he's known as well for kind of shifting human interaction a little bit into the, into the uh, background and allowing nature to have all of its strength and vibrance and interest, you know, something that really appealed to a Japanese market. So that's what he is known for. And I think those are aspects of his work that Van Gogh is responding to. But the Van Gogh work that we see uh, that is a copy after Hiroshige, it's known as a really foundational kind of work of Japonisme. And we've even got those kind of faux Japanese characters that Van Gogh explodes out of the cartouche and, and gives us a decorative border to his work. So what stops his work from being purely derivative of Hiroshige? What is it in the Van Gogh painting that breaks past copying and gives us a masterwork in its own right, do you think? I think it's, there's, it's partly about the way he's uh, interpreting things in one medium to be rendered in a different medium. Uh, so kind of... Uh, Woodblock printing is a kind of obviously a very, very different process from oil painting. Uh, the materials used, the different types of colours that can be used are uh, very different and that allows for different effects. And I think he is really pushing on that. But there are also some very subtle differences between these that I think means that Van Gogh is uh, amplifying the mood in this landscape. So that really rich red that he's using, the red in the trunk, uh, is kind of a, uh, a less, less subtle form of that sort of uh, exaggerating the mood, the magnificence, uh, the slightly weird expressionistic quality of nature. But if you look at the, that main vertical branch that's just to the right of center, and you compare the way how Hiroshige handles that and the way Van Gogh handles that, You'll notice that, say, the little elbow on the left of that main branch in the Van Gogh is much more pointy. It's much more elongated. If you look up to the other branch coming up to the left, you notice the kinks in that branch, the bends in that branch, are also uh, stronger, whereas Hiroshige's are much more subtle and elegant, I think. 
And this is part of the way that I think Van Gogh is uh, exaggerating the, that force of nature that he would look at uh, uh, in the, one of the things that attracted him to Japanese art and to blossoms more generally is that sense of hope, vivaciousness, that promise of renewal that spring brings. And I think he's kind of almost using these branches as this uh, tree is coming into flower as kind of showing this great strength of nature as it's breaking through this uh, almost like an irrational force uh, to give birth to a new hopeful world. Thanks very much, Nick. Thank you, Kathleen. You've been listening to Limelight Arts Travels podcast, A Closer Look. It was recorded on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and we acknowledge and pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this land and their elders past and present.